This is the Collaborate MD Claims Tutorial. Here we're going to click on Claims, then Add a Professional Claim. We'll do a brand new claim, but you also have the option to copy a previous claim. If you want to bill for the same person another time, you can just go to the claim for that person, copy it, and change the applicable information. That will keep you from having to do a brand new claim for every single person. We're not going to go through every part of Collaborate MD because we're not trainers for Collaborate MD, but we do want you to see what it's like to work in a billing system so you can understand why it's valuable and why you need to have one. Of course, there are sites like Availity that allow you to do free claims, and that's okay if you want to start there. But with Availity, you have to do each claim over and over. You don't have the option to copy a claim that you did for a previous patient. That becomes very time-consuming because their input process is longer than what you see here. So sometimes it's not worth it to just have something free because it may cost you more time. When you save time, you make more money, right? So let's find an existing patient. We're going to choose Jane Doe, the sample patient we entered previously. As you can see, all of the information we entered came up here. Her insurance, insurance ID, group number, everything defaulted here, and that is exactly what we want. Now, let's go to charges. This is what we call the money line. And just like on the previous screen, all of the patient information we entered appears here, including the diagnosis and procedure code. Of course, if this is different for the claim information that you have, then you'd change it. It also defaults to the current date, so we'll choose a different date of service. We're going to keep the procedure the same. That's an intensive in-home assessment code. Here, you'll see all your places of service, and we are going to choose Office. In the claims training, you were shown a sheet with all the places of service types. However, this is already defaulted in CMD, Availity, and other claims systems that you will use. So you won't have to refer to that sheet very often because it's already stored. We're going to choose Office, and the type of service is Medical Care 1. If you need to enter a surgery center, radiology, or a laboratory, everything is there. If we had a modifier, you would choose a modifier if it applies. In this case, it doesn't. And as you can see, you can enter up to four. Diagnosis pointer A. Here, it is asking which field to look at for the diagnosis or what field points to the diagnosis code. We put the diagnosis code in field A, so that is what is indicated here. Some systems list this numerically, so you may see diagnosis 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Then you would enter 1 if it applies. If there are 3 or 4 different diagnosis codes, you would put all of them here in A, B, then C, and so on. Unit Price you can see here that it defaulted to $60 because we've already pre-filled this code in the setup process. When you set up Collaborate MD, you will have the option to pre-fill your commonly used diagnosis codes and commonly used CPT codes, as well as the unit price and unit. Again, you can find all of those instructions in the Help menu, the free training provided when you sign up with Collaborate MD. Next is the unit amount, the dollar amount, and where we want the claim sent. In this case, we're going to send it to Aetna. If this patient had another date of service and they wanted to send that one to a second payer, you could do that as well. You would just need to have the second payer in the system and be sure not to choose default. Just list both payers because you need to be able to select where you want that particular claim to go. In this example, we have one payer, so it's going to go to Aetna by default. Then we'll save. So now we get the message, Diagnosis Code F4130 is not in your personal code list. Would you like to attempt to add the missing code from the master list? I can say yes by clicking Add Codes, 
or I can say no by clicking Save as Incomplete. We'll choose Add. Some codes are invalid. Would you like to fix the error or save the claim as incomplete? Well, in this case, we already know this code is incorrect, so we're going to save as incomplete. We knew that code would lead us to this screen, and we wanted to show you for training purposes. So now, we'll go back and fix it. We'll choose a code that we know is correct. All of the codes you see are the ones we pre-filled when setting up the account originally, because these are common diagnosis codes. We'll choose from the list, and then we see it entered in A, and we see A here as well. Now we are able to save the claim. If CMD knows that the diagnosis code is incorrect, which will happen sometimes, it will do what you just saw, and that's okay. That's why we wanted you to see that in training. So here's your whole claim, your patient information, the insurance company, charges, diagnosis, and CPT. Under status, you'll now see that it says, Claim at Better Health of Virginia. Since this claim has already been saved into CMD, the next time we have another claim for this member, we can just choose Copy Claim, then go in and change whatever needs to be changed. We'll choose Cancel here because we don't want to actually send the claim. So that is how to enter a professional claim. For an institutional claim, which is a hospital or a facility where they have admissions, you'll basically do the same thing. The difference is, for an institutional claim, you'll have more information to enter. Inside of CMD, you will choose Add an Institutional Claim and fill in the information that's applicable. Remember to use your CMS 1500 and UB4 paper form as a guide. Have it on your desk so you can make sure you fill in everything properly and completely. One nice feature of many billing and EHR systems is what we call edits. Edits are notifications that something doesn't look right and that you may want to give it a second look. Sometimes the edit is applicable and other times it isn't and you can ignore it and move on. Some edits are also stronger than other edits. For example, it may say, this is not a valid CPT code, and you may have to call them to let them know that it is indeed valid and to please pass the claim through. Keep in mind, these are not checks to ensure that you build correctly. It will not make sure your code matches your service or anything like that. It's simply checking to make sure the claim is submitted correctly. For example, if a CPT code is supposed to have five alphanumerical numbers, they'll be checking to make sure that is what you've entered. If you entered a four-digit CPT code, then they'll alert you that you need to fix it. Again, do not think that a billing system will correct your claim or warn you that it may be denied. It is your responsibility to ensure your claims are done correctly. As always, if you decide to use Collaborate MD, take advantage of their awesome help videos and step-by-step -step instructions. It's so user-friendly, which is why we recommend it. That concludes this portion of the training. Please proceed to the next module.